Let's take a quick tour of this. It will give us a great overview of the design of many of Logic's instruments, as uh, they're all based on a similar kind of a layout. Generally, when working with Logic's synthesizers, you have the signal flow or sound happening on the top, moving left to right. So the sound generation engine in the sampler is a bunch of recordings or samples, in this case of an electric bass. So we don't have oscillators or anything, but the sound starts over here, and we have ways to modify the way the sound can tune the sample and affect the way or style of playback with some glide options. So let's just take a look at that because a couple of the synths have some glide and portamento options. When you bring up the glide parameter here, you're basically uh, setting a time value. And the time value says, how long am I going to take to glide from one note to another with a pitch sliding effect? So that glide thing is a time value in milliseconds, right? Obviously, really extreme. We want to get a little bit of that happening. And that glide parameter always works in conjunction with the pitcher option below, because there's a couple of different kinds of behaviors that you can have with portamento or glide. In its default setting, which is the portamento setting, you click on the button to bring it to that center position. It always glides from the pitch of the previously played note. So if I play an octave here, it's going to glide up from the bottom octave or down from the top octave. Uh, any other setting will specify a direction and an amount of glide. So if you go above that value, three semitones, every note you play, there'll be a swoop down from a pitch that's three semitones above what you play in the time specified in the first letter. So there's no relationship between uh, one note and the next. They always do the exact same glide. And you can glide from above or below. So let's go for a portamento type of thing and keep it nice and subtle. So we have a subtle glide happening right there. Once we've done that, we can then move over. The sound moves from where it's generated over to the filter section. And the filter section is the primary sound shaping tool that you have both in the sampler and in uh, uh, your major synths, the ES1 and the ES2. Our filter section here, let's take a look at it right now. It's actually turned off, and it's not affecting the bass patch at all. We're just hearing the raw samples. You should remember that in some of the larger synths and plugins in uh, the Logic Studio instruments and effects, there are power switches or a kind of a modular design where you can turn sections on or off. So here's the on button for the filter. Let's bring it on. And it's currently set to a 12 dB per octave low pass mode. So it's a multi-mode filter. You can choose a steep cutoff or a more uh, gentle slope. And the modes are low pass, that's LP, high pass, and band pass. And those names describe actually what the filter does. So let's go for more of the traditional synthy kind of steep low pass filter that cuts off the highs. And that cutoff frequency is determined by the position of the cutoff knob. As you bring it down, you hear the high frequencies removed from the sound. Resonance is that familiar synth control that actually accentuates or boosts the frequencies at the momentary position of your filter cutoff. So wherever the cutoff is at in that moment, you'll hear an extra little zing or an extra little boost. And you can hear the cutoff move around. Okay, the next thing we can do is we can have that cutoff frequency follow the movement of the keyboard so that the timbre remains consistent as you move up and down the keyboard. That's called keyboard tracking. The drive parameter boosts the signal going into the filter. It's going to add a little distortion. Now the sound gets thinned out by design with most low pass filters. Even though it's removing high frequencies, there is a tendency for the low frequencies to also be uh, attenuated a little bit. Uh, and that's the way traditional analog filters always work. But most of your digital filters have the very scientifically named fat button. And that fat button restores the low frequencies that you lose with low pass filtering. Comes in pretty handy for bass patches. So we'll have fat on, add a little bit of drive, a little bit of resonance, set the cutoff down here, and have key tracking going on.